Good morning. Welcome to worship with Greystone Baptist Church. Whether you are joining us online via live stream or in your vehicles using the FM transmitter radio, or whether we're looking at your faces here in person, enjoying the beautiful weather and enjoying God's beautiful creation today, we are glad that you are here and we are grateful for the opportunity to gather together. Never again will we take that opportunity for granted, will we? Today, we want to make sure that if you are a guest with us, if this is your first time attending worship with us online or in person, or if you've been attending and we just don't know you yet, uh, we ask, I'm going to ask everybody who's here in person to look around, and if you see a new face, you know, respect that six feet of distance, but say hello, uh, wave, and, and let's make sure that we extend that Greystone welcome, uh, that family welcome to all who have gathered here. So if you're our guest, uh, we want to tell you thank you for being here with us as we worship God today. On your way in, if you did not pick up a bulletin or a communion uh, set, please do so now. Um, both of those things are located on the sidewalk um, on your way to the parking lot. Uh, communion is on the black table in little baggies. Um, you'll need uh, one baggie per person. And the bulletins are a little bit further back. Uh, there's a metal cart back there, and our greeters would be happy to share those bulletins with you. Those will be very helpful as you follow along and worship today. If you're joining us online, this is a good time for you to get up and go to the kitchen and grab some kind of carbohydrate and some kind of juice and bring it back and share communion with us in that way. Also, we want you to know that uh, in the service this morning, there will be a time of response, a time of invitation, and during that time, many things can happen. Um, during that time, if you have brought uh, an offering, a financial gift that you would like to offer um, to the church, to God, in response to God's blessing in your life, um, you can get up and place that offering in the plate, also on the sidewalk. Um, many of you have shifted your giving patterns to online during the pandemic, and we give you thanks for that. It's simple for the church, and it's simple for you. Uh, we give God thanks for the many blessings in our lives, and we give you thanks for sharing those abundantly uh, with this church. Also, during the time of response, um, it's not just about money. In fact, the more importantly, it's about your spiritual journey with God. And so if the Spirit of God is moving you in any particular way today that you would like to share with our church, if you'd like to join this body of Christ as a member, or if you would like to uh, profess publicly for the first time that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, then we would love to hear that. Or if you need a prayer uh, with any of our pastoral staff, um, then we would be more than happy to share that time and to pray with you in that moment. So during the invitation, uh, many things are possible, and we invite you to respond however God is leading you this morning. Uh, we know that the governor changed the rules a little bit on masks outside yesterday. Um, and so while we are all enjoying that new bit of freedom, we do ask that if you're not eating or drinking this morning, that you do keep your masks on while you're here uh, worshiping, just to make sure that all of us feel safe uh, as safe as possible um, as we're getting used to some of these new and changing um, orders. And so it's not a forever ask, but it is a today ask. Um, so if you're not speaking at the microphone or you're not um, eating, please do leave your masks on. If you need to use the restroom at any point in time during the service, uh, just follow the Briggs pathway over into the preschool wing. There are uh, restrooms there available for you. Now that the logistics are done, let's take a minute and prepare ourselves for worship today. Today we are beginning a new series on boldness. We believe that our God is a bold God and that God calls us to follow God boldly, breaking down walls, busting through barriers, and moving into wilderness spaces that are unknown to us. And we know, because we have read scripture, that that's how God works in our lives. And so today we're going to be talking about bold in spirit and we'll be reading from the book of Acts and continuing from our last series to think about how the spirit of God animated the early church and how the spirit of God is working to animate us today, giving us bold new directions. And so with that in mind, we ask that that bold spirit blow into this space like the wind and open us heart, mind, body, and soul to the movement of God in our lives. Let us worship together this morning.
nothing can compare You're a living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long. Christian and Pepper and Elizabeth for that wonderful music. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this gorgeous day and the chance to gather together outside to truly appreciate the beauty of the earth. We are thankful for all the caretakers of our earth as we recently celebrated Earth Day. We are especially thankful for our health care workers and doctors who use their gifts to help us deal with the coronavirus and provide vaccines to help us move closer back to normal where we can worship together and spend time with family and friends in a safe way. We continue to pray for our leaders to help us navigate through the pandemic 
and for each of us that continues to deal with various challenges, including health, stress, equality, economic and mental health crisis. We ask that you lay your healing hands on each of those in need and comfort them during this difficult time. We pray for our church and ask that the Holy Spirit guide and direct us to best use our abilities to further your kingdom here in our corner of North Raleigh and beyond. We are constantly reminded as to how precious and limited our time is, and we pray for help in encouraging us to live our lives with purpose and appreciation to make a positive impact in both making us better stewards of our gifts and also to better love and care for our neighbors. In your holy name we pray, amen. From the eighth chapter of Acts. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and he went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. And then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? He invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, he came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Isotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all of the towns until he came to Caesarea. Swear. 
This week, a number of us gathered online to watch a film called The Two Popes. And if you were one of those 20 to 25 folks who watched the first hour of the film and shared in conversation, then you deserve credit for the sermon today, and so I will make sure your names appear in all footnotes. Together, we watched the first hour of the Netflix film. We took notes on the drama inspired by historical events. As it told the story of the papacy from the death of John Paul II to Benedict to Francis. There was a moving scene about 20 minutes into the film in which Joseph Ratzinger, who was then the Pope Benedict, and Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio, the future Pope Francis, they are walking and talking in the gardens of the Pope's summer residence. Their conversation runs the gamut, the gamut of theologically controversial topics and church controversies from human sexuality to the nature of God. The two highly trained and educated and experienced clerics debate the issues with all of the intellect 
and all of the reason that is available to them. Benedict comes down on the side of tradition and orthodoxy. Bergoglio, you might imagine, has learned from the people, and he favors the movement of the Spirit working among them. You think the church is failing, Benedict asks Bergoglio. Well, we're losing people, he says in response. You think that it is the fault of the church, not of Western permissiveness? Anything goes, Benedict says. Bergoglio responds, it seems to me that your church, our church, is moving in directions that I can no longer condone, or not moving at all when the time demands movement. It seems to me, Bergoglio continues, that we are no longer a part of this world. We don't belong to it. We are not connected. A church that marries the spirit of the age, Benedict interrupts. Yes, 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 Bergoglio interrupts back, will be widowed in the next. A church that marries the spirit of the age will be widowed in the next. Bergoglio continues, nothing is static in nature or in the universe, not even God. But God does not change, Benedict asserts. Yes, yes he does. He moves toward us, Bergoglio counters. But I am the way, the truth, and the life. Where shall we find God if God is always moving? Bergoglio responds with a smile and a spirit of humility. On the journey. Today's reading from the book of Acts places the disciple Philip on the journey. On the road between Samaria and Gaza. And the text is clear that this is not just an ordinary road. It does not suffice to say that Philip was simply on the way to Gaza from Samaria. No, it was important to the author, and it's important for us to notice that Philip was specifically sent down the wilderness road. Scholars believe there were two roads that went the same route that Philip was traveling, but Philip went down the wilderness road. The Spirit led him there, and so that's where he went. Now, good students of the Bible that we all are, we should already be thinking, ah, God is up to something here right off the bat in the very first verse of today's reading when we hear that a divine messenger has sent someone into the wilderness. Down a wilderness path, we should have all kinds of stories and images coming into our heads. We should be having flashbacks of the creation story when God's spirit hovers over the wilderness, over the chaos. If not that story, then maybe the ones that are going through our minds are the wilderness that the Hebrew people survived on the other side of captivity after God parted the waters of the Red Sea and then led the people there with pillar of clouds and pillar of fire for 40 long days and nights. Or perhaps if not that story, then maybe the one of Elijah comes to mind when the prophet of Yahweh, who was sent into the wilderness to Zarephath, encounters a widow there. Or maybe we remember Elijah again sent into the wilderness when he meets God in the sound of sheer silence. These are just some of the wilderness stories in our Bible. So yes, as good students of the Bible, we know that when we hear God or the Spirit of God sending someone into the wilderness, we need to pay attention because something significant is about to happen. Somebody is going to meet them along the way, or some measure of flour is going to be multiplied as it was in Zarephath, or maybe it's going to rain down quail and manna, or maybe, just maybe, somebody is going to be lucky enough to meet God in silence, in wind, in fire, or maybe even face to face. Strange things happen 
in the wilderness. But one thing is certain. Those who enter the wilderness never emerge unchanged. Now up to this point in the story of the early church, if you've been with us for the past several weeks, you may know that Philip has played an important role along with the other disciples in establishing the church. Following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Philip and his friends have been living out the Great Commission, teaching the nations, baptizing, and making disciples. The good news of Jesus Christ is spreading. In fact, it's spreading so much that now there are nearly as many Gentile Christians as there were Jewish Christians. Even still, Christianity would not become a formal, distinct religion separate from Judaism for another two to three hundred years. So when we're reading the text, we have to remember we are all still part of the same family. Whereas the story started in Jerusalem, where the drama of Holy Week and Easter unfolded, where the early church begins to emerge, the story is now moving throughout the region. The disciples have been teaching in Samaria And now, as we heard just a moment ago, Philip, who was in Jerusalem and then in Samaria, is now on his way to Gaza via the Wilderness Road. And on that road, Philip meets an Ethiopian eunuch who is returning home from worshiping in Jerusalem. Now, we don't know much about what brought the eunuch to this particular road. Perhaps the Spirit also led him there. What did it mean that he was an Ethiopian traveling to Jerusalem to worship? Was he a lifelong Jew? Was he a recent convert? Was he taking a risk at all in traveling to the temple in Jerusalem? But on the other hand, we have to consider that not only was he an Ethiopian, he was also a eunuch. And his status as a eunuch granted him certain privileges and pleasures. He had access to the queen. And apparently he had the ability to borrow a carriage or chariot and to travel throughout the region. However, those few privileges came with a great cost. As a eunuch, at a young age, he was castrated so as not to be seen as a threat to the women that he would spend his life serving. And because of this, he would never have the opportunity to perform a traditionally masculine role in society. He would never fit the mold, so to speak. He would never be able to fulfill the religious and cultural expectation to marry, to be fruitful, and to multiply. Perhaps it's because of these realities that the eunuch connects with the text from Isaiah that he is struggling to read. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, like a lamb, silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. Under normal circumstances, these two, Philip, the Galilean Jew, who was a disciple of Jesus, And the Ethiopian eunuch working for the queen, they would never have met one another. Under normal circumstances, they would have been relegated to their worlds of work and leisure. Under normal circumstances, these two would have never been on the same road at all, much less at the same time. But this is no ordinary road. This was not a normal time. This was the wilderness road, remember? And this was the time discerned and directed by the Spirit of God. In fact, the Spirit plays such an important role in directing this narrative that Barbara Brown Taylor, a famous preacher and teacher and writer, she says that the Spirit should and could be treated as a third character in the narrative. She says the story is thick with the presence of the Holy Spirit, which raises interesting questions about how that spirit works. If God is the lawmaker, then in this story, God is also the law bender, 
or the law transcender, who both places limits on the faithful and inspires them to challenge those limits when right relationships with God and neighbor are at stake. And the leadership of the Spirit, urging faithful people across lines of difference, across geopolitical boundaries, across racial and ethnic divisions. It's a theme that appears throughout our holy scriptures in both testaments. It is not just a Jesus thing, as New Testament Christians like you and I might be predisposed to believe. Rather, it appears to be a spirit thing, a God thing, to push the limits, to cross the lines, always erring on the side of relationship, of loving God and loving neighbor. Once we begin to understand that central truth, we can begin to see how the Spirit in this reading from Acts is working, related to the emerging church in the ancient world, but also and perhaps even more importantly, related to us as we struggle together to recreate, to reimagine, to rebuild the church that might be relevant today, a church that our children and their children and their children might want to inherit. See, the real excitement of the biblical narrative today comes when the two men are traveling the road together reading and interpreting scripture. They come across a body of water, and the eunuch boldly asks Philip, look, there is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And traditionally speaking, there would have been a number of reasons to refuse or at least to delay this baptism. See, the eunuch wasn't part of the religious community. He was an outsider. He couldn't live the life expected of a man in the ancient world. He broke the mold. He could never fit into the conventions of the ancient patriarchy, and he would never be a picture of masculinity. And we aren't really even sure if the eunuch had a moment of repentance, of confession, of absolution. We don't know what kind of prayers the eunuch was praying. Surely there would have been a better time or a better place to perform that that baptism. But Philip just jumped right in the water with him, didn't he? Boldly affirming the movement of the Spirit as God moved closer to the people that day on the journey, on the wilderness road. It seems that like an artist who first learns the rules of color and texture and shadow and light, and then learns how to break the rules in all the best ways. God is bending the rules here as the Spirit leads Philip and leads the eunuch together into the water. And it leads me to believe that maybe we too are able to be co-creators with God, learning the rules and then boldly following the Spirit as she calls us forward closer to one another, closer to our neighbors, closer to the heart of God that is longing to set us free, free to love, free to grow, free to listen, and yes, even free to change. Perhaps Barbara Brown Taylor got it right. If God is the lawmaker, then perhaps God is also the law bender, or at least the law transcender who places both limits on the faithful and inspires them, us, to challenge the limits when right relationships with God and neighbor are at stake. Friends, we are living in a time in which there are more than enough reasons to be divided. Sure, we can always search our dogmas, our theologies, our interpretations of scripture to find and support reasons to separate ourselves from one another, to exclude those from the table or the waters of baptism, to keep ourselves protected and secure from our neighbors who are different from us. 
But I believe that if we are to take today's reading seriously, we might just find within it a call to be more like Philip, a call to be more like the eunuch, who were both bold enough not to take the easy road, but to take the wilderness road because the Spirit was calling them there. The road less traveled, the road of risk and uncertainty, but also the road of relationship and holy promise. So I guess there's only one thing left for us to consider today. As we face our world, as we face our God, and as we face all of our neighbors near and far, will we also be bold in spirit? Amen. Let us be bold in following the Spirit as she leads us to continue building a church of living stones. Come see, let your heart be set on
As I said just a moment ago, there are so many reasons to be apart. And this year, we certainly have been very apart. And so it is good to be together and to remember that we've learned how to be together because we have done it at this table time and time again. There is a gift for each of us at this table, a gift of God's grace, a gift that is freely given because of Jesus, who shows us the way, who shows us how to love the way that God wants us to love in this world. And so as we think about how the Spirit of God is calling us forward, we do that reflecting on the life of Jesus that we know through the good news of the Gospels. And we do it faithfully, clinging to the Spirit of God who is calling us and leading us in all kinds of directions. And if ever we feel like we get a little too far away, all we have to do is come back to this table with the simple elements of bread and drink and remember that this is the body of Christ given to us as a gift of grace that we didn't deserve and we didn't earn. Grace to animate and to nourish our bodies to go and be God's love in the world. The scripture tells us that on one of the last nights that Jesus had with his disciples, He found himself sharing a meal, an ordinary meal, with bread and wine. And over the course of that meal, which he shared with all of his friends and followers, Judas included, they weren't perfect. Over the course of that meal, Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he blessed it, and he poured it out, saying, this is the cup of life the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink. Each time we share of this meal, each time we gather around this table and our bodies and souls are nourished, we do so in remembrance of Jesus the Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray together. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the extravagant love that you have shown to us in the life of Christ. We give you thanks for meeting us just as we are, on roads well-traveled and roads that seem like wilderness. And wherever we are and however we are, you have called us beloved. And for that, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the spirit in which you work among us, within us, and around us. And we give you thanks for calling us forward. Most of all, we give you thanks for the mystery of this table and for the great measure of grace that we find each time we gather at it. We ask that you bless the meal that we have received. Bless it to nourish us and to remind us always that your gift of life is ours to share anywhere and everywhere and with all people. Call us to go about our lives from this moment on, radiating your love and your grace and seeking your peace and working to bring it about in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, as we start to practice living in that peace, let's do it here. Take a moment and stand up and wave at somebody you haven't seen or flash them a peace sign or however it is that you would like to share the peace of God um, because 
It's not as easy to say the peace of Christ be with you, but that is what we mean. So the peace of Christ be with you. All right, as you are finding your way back to your seats, um, just want to extend an invitation to each of you. During the refrain that will be played in just a moment, I'm going to stand down here in front of the communion table. If anybody is in need of a prayer or wants to share the good news of how God is working in your life, you are welcome to come down and join me here. However God is calling you to respond to the invitation of the Spirit, we ask that you respond faithfully during the next song. Justice in the truth 
That is a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, but seriously, may God break our chains that bind us and hold us back so that we can live boldly. Um, just a few reminders for you. Uh, deacon nominations, those are due today by noon. Um, we would love for you to, to nominate some folks to serve with us as our deacons. Uh, you can find that nomination form there in your bulletin, and if you haven't already done so, we would love for you to fill that out so that we can begin finding deacons to service in the, in the next year. Uh, Chrissy mentioned Two Popes, that series on Wednesday nights. The final meeting for that is this Wednesday night. You'll get an email with all of the link information, and if you missed last week, you can still join this week. We would love to have you. The following Wednesday, we will be with uh, Dr. Chris Gamble um, via Zoom to talk about rebuilding community after COVID, and that is Wednesday, May 12th, and that'll be our final Wednesday night Zoom series for a while. Um, bikes and trikes, our children, fifth grade on down to as young as you want to bring them, are invited to join us. Sunday, Saturday, May 15th, over in our other parking lot, bring their bikes or trikes or scooters and come enjoy a time of fellowship from 9 to 11 on May 15th. You have been seeing in your email every member a minister. This is where you are encouraged to be you, to minister in whatever way God is speaking to you through your, in your community, in our world, however God is calling you. We would love to hear your story. So if you will, send us an email and let us know how you have been a minister. We would love to, to read that and to hear that. You can find more information in your weekly emails. And also want to remind you that we do meet every Sunday at 10 o'clock. Next Sunday, we will be back to being in our sanctuary, and we'll be there for the next few Sundays until we're back here um, on the first Sunday of June. We'd love to see you then. So it sure is good to be together this morning, and April already said it, but wow, I've never heard a trombone make that noise, so thank you for that, James. Um, it is good to be in a worship service talking about the movement of the Spirit when we feel the wind blow. It's the same word in Hebrew for wind and spirit, and it's good to have music that reminds us that being a part of this journey can be fun. It can make us want to dance. It can make us want to smile. And so with that in mind, as you leave this place, our hope is that you leave refilled and re-energized by the creative and bold spirit of God. And so as you go forth back into your lives, go with this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's presence always be alive within you, giving you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. And grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your hands and heal through them. May God take your feet and walk with them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen. <laughs>